All right, so as a follow-up to my last video on shotguns, today we're going to be tiering snipers instead. Uh, once again, this list is going to be oriented around endgame content only. Uh, so when I say endgame, again, I'm talking about speedruns, low mans, day ones, uh, low power content like master raids, master sectors, etc. Like I said in the last video, pretty much everything about the last video, all the stipulations, they transfer over to this video. So everything that I said before, factors, non-factors, uh, weapon function, all of that is pretty much the same. So snipers are obviously a little bit different from shotguns. What do we talk about when we think about, you know, what what are the factors that we're considering when we're comparing snipers? How are they different from shotguns? So snipers obviously do less damage per shot than shotguns uh, as a compromise because obviously they have uh, practically infinite range in Destiny terms. Um, so what are, what are we looking for in a good sniper? So in terms of weapon function, right, uh, a sniper has a couple roles. Uh, it's a little bit less diverse than a shotgun. Uh, snipers are typically used for one boss dps in range restricted scenarios uh, number two bursting down a target from long range and number three um a utility slash ad clear hybrid role uh, which you typically don't see in normal gameplay but you'll see it in stuff like speedruns. Uh, for example uh, a really really good example i can think of is the third encounter of garden where people use snipers to kill individual goblins at very specific and precise times snipers are great at acting as a hit scan burst of damage that you can use to kill a red bar uh, in a time sensitive environment so those are kind of like the three roles that i envision snipers being in um, and so with that being said, uh, let's actually get on with the list. I'm not going to go over factors, non-factors, etc. because I went over that in the previous video. Um, but I'm going to give you a brief, a brief window into how the scoring is going to work uh, for this tier list. And then we'll get into the tier list. So scoring, there's three archetypes for snipers, right? There's adaptive, there's rapids, and there's aggressives. So adaptives, um, they do the lowest total damage of all three sniper archetypes. They do the lowest DPS of all three sniper archetypes, and it's fairly significant. And um, they have pretty much no upside uh, for both of these disadvantages. So snipers, you're looking at total damage and you're looking at DPS. Adaptives suck at both uh, for whatever reason. And um, so yeah, we've given them zero points here. And rapids and aggressives, on the other hand, rapids have the highest DPS, naturally, as they are the highest fire rate. Uh, of the sniper family but they also happen to have almost equal total damage with aggressives which is probably a result of their recent reserve buff so as a result we're going to put rapids we're going to give them three points right originally it was rapid two aggressive one adaptive zero but then i really thought you know uh, archetypes are quite important for snipers like separating adaptives and aggressives and rapids more is more important to me uh, especially given how i weighted perks and affinity so i decided to put rapids at three aggressives at two and i decided to put adaptives at zero uh, in terms of affinity there's no surprises here it's kind of just like shotguns kinetic and solar uh snipers got a one value um because solar snipers being used for damage purposes obviously galley apex stuff like that all solar uh and then you have stuff like uh kinetic uh, obviously, if you have a sniper, a legendary sniper in the kinetic slot, you would want it to be kinetic. Um, there is no upside to having it be stasis or strand at this time in the current sandbox. So that's affinity. And then finally, we have perks. So perks, um, there's not really um, four categories of perks for snipers. There's really just three. So you have ammo, reload, and damage. So for those three perks, for ammo, we're looking at stuff like field prep, triple tap. I've given four times a charm two points and everything else just one point because four times a charm is just that good. And then for reload perks, we have stuff like overflow, clown cartridge, envious, shoot to loot, stuff like that. I've given reconstruction one point here and everything else 0.5 points because obviously a reload perk is not as important as an ammo regen perk or a damage perk on a sniper. And then finally, for damage, uh, we have stuff like focus fury, firing line, vorpal, frenzy, cascade point, bait and switch. Um, here I've actually given a little bit of a distribution, uh, firing line, bait and switch and kinetic tremors have gotten two points. Everything else gets one point. And if you have no damage perk on the sniper, because it's such a downside, uh, I've given it a minus one actually, uh, which is a bit of a rarity, but I did it on the other, um, on the other categorization as well for shotguns. So I thought it would be apt to do it here. I really think snipers that don't have any damage perks, uh, should be punished appropriately for, um, you know, not being viable. Uh, that being said. Uh, the final thing to consider that we have here is competition. So if a sniper, if I think a sniper is the best at what it specifically does, then I've given it two points. 
if a sniper is an acceptable alternative to the best snipers in the game, like if you're a newer player and you're just kind of picking up a sniper, is it an okay alternative, like it's not a huge difference against the best in the game, then I've given it one point, and if it's just, you know, you should not even consider this thing, it's going to be zero points. So that's how I've done the scoring for this tier list. Uh, let's get into actually going through the tier list now, and uh, we're going to go in alphabetical order just like last time, okay? So first, let's go to 1,000 yard stair. So where's 1,000 yard stair? 1,000 yard stair is right here. Uh, so 1,000 yard stair, uh, some of you guys were requesting that I open the perk pool when I'm talking about these weapons. Uh, I think it's a little bit more engaging if I do that as well. So we're going to open 1,000 yard stair. We're going to take a, a, a nice long stare at it. Let's look at this thing's perk pool. So first, this thing is an adaptive frame sniper, so the worst archetype, and it's void. So it's not very good. Uh, it's a pretty bad start. And if we look at the perk pool, yeah, this is um, this is clearly designed to be a PvP sniper for the most part. Uh, I mean, it has triple tap, which is okay, and then it has no good damage perks. It has tricorn. Like, you're not using tricorn on a sniper. So this thing has pretty much just triple tap, and then it has no good damage perks, so I give it a minus one. Uh, and then it's, uh, it's a non-starter. It's a non-starter. I don't think this is controversial whatsoever. Nobody is using a thousand yard stare in PvE. So, you know, it ended with a final score of zero, and this thing is going to go smack into the D tier. So where is this guy? We're going to put it right in the D tier. It's a non-starter. Okay, moving on, we have a distant pull. That's this guy right here. The new, uh, sort of new, uh, stasis rapid fire sniper. Uh, let's go ahead and look at its perk pull. So that's right over here. A distant pull. Again, it is a rapid fire frame stasis sniper. Uh, so rapid fire is pretty good, but stasis is, remember, minus 15% against kinetics. And this thing has triple tap and overflow in the first column, and it has focused fury as well. Uh, we did some examination of how good explosive payload is on snipers. It's about a 5% buff, so it is, I'm not even going to mention it here as a damage perk, so just forget that it exists. So we're basically looking at triple tap, overflow, focus fury, uh, which is okay. Focus fury is not a bad perk. I used to really dislike focus fury, but I think focus fury is just okay now. Um, so yeah, triple tap focus fury, overflow focus fury, it's decent. It's just decent. Um, we're going to put it smack into B tier. It's decent overall. Uh, you know, it loses on 15% on of its damage, but, um, and it doesn't have an, an insane damage perk or, you know, four times a charm. So it's just okay. It's an acceptable alternative to some of the other snipers that we're going to see in the higher tiers as we move on. Next up, we have Adored. Okay, so Adored, this is, uh, you know, famous, famous sniper right here, uh, ritual weapon. Uh, beloved successor and then beloved came out again and, and beat it again but what does this thing have more importantly it has triple tap and vorpal but it's an adaptive frame and it's arc so not a good affinity uh not a good archetype and decent ammo return perk and okay damage perk so this thing is really mid uh it's got you know not much going for it if you're a new player i wouldn't even say this thing is worth buying from the kiosk unless you want like a pvp sniper or something but bungie has made so many good pvp snipers since adored came out that it's probably not even worth buying for that, to be honest. So again, Adored is going to go right in the D tier. Um, you know, it has triple Vorpal, but again, it's an adaptive. So there, you, you could do much better. There's a lot of snipers in the game. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to um, glaze Adored any more than it needs to be glazed. You know, it doesn't really belong anywhere above the D tier. Uh, but that being said, obviously, it is, you know, high D tier compared to compared to this guy. Okay, moving on, we have Albruna D. Albruna D. Where's Albruna D? I think that's this guy right here, right? So Albruna D close some of these albruna d is an arc aggressive yeah it's an arc aggressive from gambit and uh this thing's got a big ass perk pool but what it does have in that big ass perk pool is quite a few decent perks so it's got field prep it's got triple tap it's got clown cartridge it does have explosive payload in the first column but that five percent is so minor that it's just not worth it especially on an aggressive frame where you really really make good use of those mag perks those reload perks uh, those ammo reach like ammo return perks like triple tap you really don't want to waste it on something like explosive payload uh, for like a four or five percent gain in your damage so we're, we're just going to ignore that um so yeah decent perks and then it's got firing line and you know light.gg has conveniently highlighted this for us but firing line vorpal and frenzy uh, it also has cascade point which is a unique perk uh, cascade point is a pretty massive dps increase but on a you know uh, I tend to say on snipers, especially small mag size snipers without good ammo return perks, Cascade Point is pretty niche, uh, and um, I don't think it's really developed itself into a meta contender right now. That being said, it is unique enough that I've given it a separate amount of points compared to stuff like Firing Line and Frenzy. So as a result, Albruna D, uh, we're going to put this thing solidly in the B tier. The B tier. Uh, pretty solid contender, decent gambit weapon. Uh, I would say it's a little bit better than the Distant Pull in general. Uh, but they're pretty close, so they both belong in the B tier. Uh, okay, let's move on. Let's talk to Apostate. Apostate's right over here. 
Uh, I believe Apostate is an Arc 140. Uh, an Arc Rapid Fire Frame from the Moon. Yes, from Altars of Sorrow. Okay, so this thing is uh, pretty bad. It has Lead from Gold, which uh, if for, for whatever reason you're using a Rapid Fire Arc Sniper uh, in like a traversal encounter or activity, you have Lead from Gold. And um, you have Explosive Payload, which is not even a damage perk worth mentioning. So this thing's pretty much got nothing going for it, besides the fact that it's a rapid fire frame. So, um, you know, unsurprisingly, we're going to be putting Apostate in the D tier, uh, probably right next to Adored, their next door neighbors. I don't think um, Apostate <laughs> belongs any higher than where it is. Okay, let's go to Beloved next. Beloved, famously solid PvP sniper, but how well does it do in PvE? Well, it's an adaptive, so already a bad start. It's solar, so it has a good affinity for the current sandbox. Uh, and then it has four times the charm, so it looks pretty good so far. And then it has no damage work. <laughs> it has no good damage work. It has rampage, eh, you know. It has box breathing, another, eh, you know. So we're not we're not using those. Uh, basically, it just has it has four times the charm. That's it. So um, uh, you know, not surprisingly, beloved is also going in the D tier next to its friend adored, next to its brother in arms adored. Uh, both clones. We're gonna we're gonna leave them right there. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, let's talk about bite of the fox. Next, I believe that is our next contender. Where's Bite of the Fox? It's over here. Okay. Bite of the Fox. Bite of the Fox is, I believe, uh, an Iron Banner Sniper. Yeah, which was reissued relatively recently. Uh, yeah, it first came out long, long ago, but it was relatively uh, recently reissued in Iron Banner. This thing is a Kinetic Aggressive, which is a great start for any weapon to have. And it has uh, Envious Vorpal. Envious Vorpal. Now, Envious isn't that great on snipers. It's, it's just all right. Uh, especially for a kinetic sniper, it's kind of a weird choice. And of course, Vorpal is not the best perk you can get on snipers anymore. Uh, it hasn't been for a while. So, um, you know, it's it's not a bad sniper. You know, th this is it's just okay. Um, I think um, I think it's a solid C tier. It's a solid C tier uh, contender. You know, this thing uh, doesn't have stuff like Firing Line. And uh, Envious is just kind of a weird, kind of unwieldy perk to have on a sniper. It's kind of just okay. It's like a sort of like Overflow. Um, yeah, it's, it's just okay. It's just all right. You know, it's an acceptable alternative, but uh, I wouldn't call it decent overall. Okay, next up we have Defiance of Yasmin from King's Fall. Uh, unfortunately, another adaptive frame sniper, but but this thing has some stuff going for it. First of all, it has Runneth Over. Runneth Over, it basically acts like overflow if you're near your teammates, and all you need to do is just reload the gun, which is which is uh, pretty awesome, actually, right? So Runneth Over is pretty nice. Um, it also has Shoot to Loot. I think this is one of the first snipers to ever have Shoot to Loot. Uh, and it's in the kinetic slot, too, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it has lead from gold, which is okay. And um, it has firing line and, and vorpal and focus fury. So mostly we're just looking at firing line here. We're kind of looking at shoot to loot lead from gold firing line. This thing has some utility use to it. But again, it's an adaptive, which really, really, really shoots it in the foot here. Uh, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to put this thing in the C tier. Um, just mostly because it's an adaptive. If adaptives ever get a buff, this thing might move up a little bit. But again, this thing is an adaptive. It has no ammo return perk. And it doesn't really have anything good, like really, really good in the first column. So it's mostly a utility sniper. You might see people using it for like shoot to loot purposes. But besides that, it's mostly, you know, sticking to PvP. Um, so yeah, top of C tier for Mr. Defiance of Yasmin. Uh, let's keep going. Let's look at Distant Tumulus. Okay, so this sniper is an old one. This sniper has been, you know, rocking around the meta for a long, long time. A lot of people, a lot of speedrunners, just people in general, have one of these with firing line in their vaults from long, long ago with clown firing. Classic roll. Uh, I mean, this thing's got a tight, tight perk pool and only two perks that really matter here. I mean, maybe lead from gold, but this thing's got pretty much just two perks that matter here. Clown and firing. Everybody knows them. Your mother knows them. Um, so how, how good do I think it is? I mean, it, it's rapid. It's solar. That's a great start, right? That's, that's the most points you can get in archetype and affinity. And uh, of course, it's also got a clown firing. And firing is one of the best uh, damage perks you can get on a, a DPS sniper. And uh, it's got clown, which is decent. It's decent. Um, oftentimes, you know, if you reload, you get 11 in the mag. Uh, that's enough to last you for a whole phase. You're never going to need to do more than that. So, you know, not bad at all. Um, not, uh, I don't think it's it's going to be short of S tier. I think um, not much you can do to improve this sniper, given that most people use it in a swap capacity. Um, the only thing you could really do to it is maybe four times a charm uh, in some instances. And... Um, yeah, I mean, you probably wouldn't put bait and switch on a sniper where you're swapping this often as well. Um, so yeah, it's just, just a solid sniper put in the S tier. Okay, next up we have Eye of Soul. Eye of Soul from Trials of Osiris. So let's go ahead and look at Eye of Soul. Where do we find this guy? It's up here. Okay, so, oops, I didn't mean to open that. Okay, 
So let's take a look at Eye of Soul. Eye of Soul is an adaptive, uh, adaptive frame kinetic sniper from Trials, like I said. And uh, this thing has pretty much all PvP perks, right? Pretty much all PvP perks. No ammo return perk. No good reload perk. And Vorpal. That's and Focus Fury. Yeah. So that that's that's basically it. And it's an adaptive. Uh, I don't think it's gonna surprise anyone that we're putting this in the D tier. Uh, I think this one's probably gonna go right over here. Yeah. It's probably worse than worse than the door. At least the door is triple tap. This thing is nothing. Okay. Moving forward, let's look at Far Future. Far Future from, I believe, Season of the Chosen. This is one of the first snipers that I got when I first started playing the game. So this is, yeah, this is Far Future. It's a solar adaptive. Um, for the time, these perks were pretty decent. You know, it has auto-loading holster, has lead from gold, it has frenzy. Um, people used it with demo for, like, you know, duo Atheon, that kind of thing. Uh, these days, this is not a very good perk pool, and this is not a good archetype. So this thing's gonna go pretty far down the ladder here. Uh, I think I put it in the C tier. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the C tier. Bottom of the C tier, uh, right around here. Yeah, not much use for this guy these days outside of very niche utility purposes. Okay, moving on, what do we have? We have Father's Sins. Where's Father's Sins? Look at this. Okay, what a weird looking sniper, huh? This thing has a crazy scope. Okay, so let's go to Father's Sins. Father Sins is a rapid fire void sniper. It's craftable. It has lead from gold, shoot salute, firing line, uh, and it has focus fury and it has triple tap. Wow. So it has four out of six decent perks in the first column and then has focus fury. Now, focus fury is decent. It's not too bad. Um, I think this thing is probably deserving of being either high B or low A tier. I think ultimately, based on its score, we decided to put it in the A tier because uh, it is a rapid fire. It is a rapid fire sniper, best archetype. Uh, it's not solo or kinetic, but it does have some utility perks. Uh, it has shoot to loot. It has a bunch of ammo return perks, a bunch of ammo efficiency perks, and Focus Fury is not the worst damage perk in the world. So this thing is, I would say, pretty individually strong, makes a case for itself in a variety of contexts. Uh, definitely the type of sniper where it's good at a lot of things, but not great at any one particular thing. So I think, you know, putting it in the A tier, individually strong, not a not not the worst thing in the world okay what do we got next frozen orbit frozen orbit so this is another pvp sniper or a sniper you get from the crucible playlist uh i think this thing's had its perk pool changed quite a bit um it's a void aggressive so not a bad start and it has what do we what do we got here we got clown we got auto we got triple we got lead and we have vorpal and that's pretty much it we have Vorpal. yeah I mean, that's not bad for an aggressive. You know, Vorpal's not a bad perk to have on an aggressive. Uh, you know, high single damage shots, high damage per shot, not awful uh, for dealing with majors. Uh, I think we decided to put it ultimately in the B tier, if I'm not mistaken. Now, where does it sit in the B tier? That is a question. Where does it sit in the B tier? Point wise, I think it sits right next to a distant pull. I think it sits right there. I think it's slightly worse than a distant pull, in my opinion. So, oh yeah, it has high impact reserves, yes. High impact reserves, sorry, I forgot to mention that, thank you. Chat, uh, high impact reserves, yeah, decent perk, but uh, again, across the entire mag, not the most amazing thing in the world. Um, yeah, frozen orbit, solid B tier, solid B tier. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, next, we have, what do we have, what do we have? We have Fugue, Fugue 55, where's that guy? Fugue 55, I am struggling, where is Fugue? Where is Fugue? Okay, I am very blind, or I did not download the image. Okay, it's here. I'm really stupid. Okay, sorry. There we go. Fugue 55. It was all the way on the right, hiding from me. It was scared because I'm going to put it on blast. No, I'm kidding. This, this sniper's okay. Um, this thing actually, for a world drop sniper, this is a world drop sniper, isn't it? Yeah, this is a world drop sniper. For a world drop sniper, this thing has some like very, very good perks, right? It has auto, fourth, lead, firing, vorpal, and focus fury, right? I mean, like, Look at this 2 by 3 matrix right here. I mean, that is, you know, they were cooking when they made this one. They were cooking. Uh, so it's pretty good. The only problem is that, right? It's an adaptive, which really sucks. If this thing was, you know, like a solar rapid fire, like, whoa, cooking with gas, right? Cooking with gas. So that being said, you know, it's still decent. The perks are so good that it's, uh, it's still, I'm, I'm still going to put in the B tier. Uh, it's definitely like right over here, I think. Yeah, I'm going to put it probably right over here, actually. Yeah. I think that's a, a solid place for it. You know, if it really just wasn't an adaptive and wasn't void, uh, we'd have a, we, you know, we'd be cooking. Like I said, we'd be cooking. But um, it's just, it's just unfortunate. It's just unfortunate. Okay, next up we have Galu RR3, Uzume clone. Uzume clone. 
What do we got in the Galu? What do we got in the Galu? So Galu's got Overflow Focus Fury. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It has Shootsalu 2 for a utility perk, but it has Overflow Focus Fury and it's an adaptive. Uh, again, this thing is um, just, you know, not, not good. <laughs> it's just not good. Uh, it's just not good. Um, not much to say about this one, really. Yeah, it's an Arc Adaptive and it has Focus Fury is just okay. And then Overflow is like, okay. I'm going to put it at the top of D tier. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a non-starter, but it's uh, probably the best non-starter that there is. Um, yeah, if it wasn't an adaptive, you know, it would probably go a little bit higher, but, you know, it's not too bad. Okay, let's, um, let's look at Ikelos SRV3. That's this guy right here. Ikelos SRV3, this guy's had obviously three versions. This is no doubt the best one, but what do we have perk-wise? We have overflow i believe yeah overflow we have fourth times and then we have high impact reserves and we have focus fury so not bad right not bad um focus uh, four times a charm is is a great perk to have on a sniper it's a solar rapid which is really really great and uh, it has focus fury which is decent and it has high impact reserves which is also decent um and but it doesn't have firing line it doesn't have firing line so unfortunately uh that's going to keep this thing from being in the s tier but this is undoubtedly an a tier sniper uh individually strong uh, pretty good for uh, just if you need a solar rapid sniper and you, you don't have tumulus or if you're going for a total damage kind of outlook this thing basically equals tumulus once you shoot three or four shots depending on your max size um, and focus fury is actually um, pretty underrated I would say for long phases if you're doing long phases focus fury you can keep it up for pretty much the entire phase uh, as soon as you activate it once for the first time so focus fury is a bit of an underrated perk in that regard but uh, of course you know if you're going raw dps Tumulus is um, definitely the better sniper to look at. Okay, next up we have Irukanji. Okay, Irukanji. This one I was a little conflicted over. All right, I know my chat knows this. I was a little conflicted over this because originally when this sniper first came out, a lot of people were asking me, "Hey, is Irukanji good? You know, it has like decent perks, whatever, whatever." And I was like, "No, it's stasis. It sucks." <laughs> so you know, I was kind of mean. I was kind of mean to the sniper. I can't lie. But um, you know, we we we've gone over it in chat a little bit. First things first, right, to make this sniper's case, it's a rapid fire frame, even though it is stasis, it is a rapid fire frame, that's number one. Number two, it is the only kinetic slot um, sniper that has four times and firing line. So it has the, the fugue roll, but it's a rapid, right? So this is really, really, really good. And it has shoot to loot, which gives it a little bit of utility. Uh, we're going to ignore focus here because it has firing line. And this thing is vice stinger. This thing is vice stinger as well. So it has a lot of things going for it. If this thing was kinetic, this thing would be dethroning or equal to the supremacy, and it would be a very viable pick for damage. So, um, you know, besides that, if this thing wasn't stasis, it would be uh, easily top of S tier, right? But um, given how good it is, and given the scoring that it managed to pull off in our new scoring system, um, I'm going to put it at the bottom of S tier. I'm going to put it at the bottom of S tier. It has a you know, it's a little bit more well-rounded than some of the snipers in the S tier, like Tumulus, for example. Tumulus is very single-minded. Uh, you know, Irukanji does a little bit more, but a little less, uh, you know, a little less effectively, let's say. Okay, so um, let's keep going. What do we have next? Last 4A. This one is, I think this one, right? Yeah. Last 4A. Last 4A. Last 4A. That's this guy right here. So this is a solar aggressive, so that's a pretty good start. And it has Lead, Envious, Field, and it has Frenzy and Cascade and Focused. So Frenzy and Focused, obviously same category of damage perk, but we also have Cascade Point, which is again, like I said before, pretty interesting perk to have on a sniper, but not super, super, uh, you know, super delightful to have when you have, uh, when you get one of the snipers with these. Uh, so I think we're going to say last 4A, given the perks that it has and that it's an aggressive solar, I think it belongs in the A tier. Uh, I don't recall exactly where. I think I think it was right up here. Yeah, right next to Ikelos SR. Uh, pretty decent, right? I mean, like this thing has, uh, you know, it has Cascade, has Focus, kind of just like uh, you know, Ikelos uh, SR. Um, and it has some like decent perks here. I think this sniper would be uh, decent for like roam roaming style content. Uh, less so for like maybe DPS. But uh, yeah, not a, not a bad sniper. Definitely one uh worth considering. Uh, let's keep going. We have Locus Locutus. Locus Locutus. Yeah. All right. Looks like cutest right there. Um, this thing, I'm sure many people have pointed this out already. And uh, I think I would, when I first saw this thing's perks in the API, I was like, yeah, they just made Thoughtless again. Uh, this thing is literally just Thoughtless. This thing is literally just Thoughtless. Uh, the only difference is it also has high ground, um, which is like, who cares? So yeah, this thing is basically just Thoughtless. It has overflow firing. It's an adaptive. It's stasis. Uh, being adaptive in stasis, pretty bad. 
Overflow and firing is okay. It's just okay. So we're gonna put this thing probably bottom of C tier. Um, you know, it, it probably belongs to be like a little bit above this guy. Um, I'm gonna say, yeah, I think right over here is good. Right next to our, our Bite of the Fox with Envious Vorpal. I think, yeah, Thoughtless number two. We're gonna put it right over there. Okay, next up we have Long Shadow. Okay, Long Shadow. So let me locate Long Shadow. Nice and orange, pretty easy to pick out of the crowd. Long Shadow, this thing is well known for its field prep triple tap roll. Back when, um, you know, that was a thing that was important or something. I, I don't know. I don't know why you would ever want that. Um, these days, a, a roll like that, I mean, uh, we have like, you know, rewind four times a charm on uh, Supremacy, which is basically, you know, that but better on a, on a better archetype. And uh, so this thing is, yeah, I mean, Explosive Payload is not a, a damage perk really worth considering. Field Prep Triple Tap, even with both those perks, this thing doesn't reach the total damage that is near any meta sniper in the game right now. So this thing is basically useless. It's basically useless. I don't think I, need, I don't think you needed me to tell you that, but I'm going to tell you it. Um, this thing is a D tier. Yeah, it's a D tier. I think it belongs probably like right around here, if not maybe here. Yeah, probably, probably right around here. I think um, that kind of makes sense for it. Okay um let's keep going what do we got next we got uh whatever this guy's called no wait that's not what we have next we're going alphabetically i'm being silly we have luna regolith my bad we have luna regolith luna regolith i think this is a a strike sniper strike playlist vanguard playlist sniper that came out this season if i'm not mistaken luna regolith so luna regolith Number three, actually, apparently they've made two before. This is an aggressive solar, just like last foray. And uh, what does it have? So it has clown, field, triple. Uh, it has shoot to loot. So we've got a, a pretty stacked first column, just no fourth times. And we've got high ground. Mm, okay. We have firing, which is decent. We have cascade, which is interesting. And then um, nothing else really uh, worth looking at here. Yeah, nothing, nothing else really worth looking at. So um where are we gonna put lunar regolith i think lunar regolith goes right in the a tier right in the a tier next to uh yeah these three snipers are pretty much neck and neck i don't think there's a uh, anything that really uh, these two snipers have actually really similar these two snipers are okay you know what we're gonna look at these two again because uh i think there's some some foul play going on here right last foray and lunar regolith are like the same sniper bro they're like the exact same like, right they're they're solar aggressives right they're solar aggressives and we go to down to their perk pool right i mean Okay, they're not the exact same, but they have they, one has Cascade, one has Focus, and one is Firing, and one is Cascade, and then I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess Lunar Regolith is technically a little bit better, right? Because it has like Triple Tap, but it doesn't have Envious. I don't know. Anyway, they're they're, they're pretty much identical. They're they're like almost essentially identical. So um, yeah, we're gonna put Lunar Regolith like a little bit above. There we go, just to make me feel better. Okay, next up we have Macabre. Macabre which is uh, an arc aggressive from our wonderful haunted sectors. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at its perk pool. Uh, this thing's got a pretty small perk pool. It's got triple auto clown. And in the second column, we have Vorpal and then high impact. This thing is basically, this is almost identical to frozen orbits pool, just smaller. Yeah. And damage wise, this is essentially the frozen orbit pool. So uh, I think it's only fair that we put it pretty much where frozen orbit is. Uh, which I think is in the B tier. Yeah, we're just going to put it right next to Frozen Orbit because these two are basically carbon copies of each other, at least when we're talking PvE. Uh, Macabre, actually. Um, is, is that a French word? I'm not going to pull out my French accent on you, but I'm pretty sure that's a French word, so, you know. Um, okay, next up, what do we got? Um, what do we got? What do we got? Mercurial Overwatch. Or over I almost said Overwatch. <laughs> Overwatch. Mercurial Overwatch. <laughs> So this is the comp sniper. Uh, I don't think it's going to come as a surprise to anyone. This is an adaptive. It's arc. And this thing has no PvE perks. It has Vorpal. But that's not intended to be a PvE perk on this weapon anyway. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to do you all a favor. Save you the time. Uh, we're going to put this thing right in the D tier. Uh, where is it? Mercurial Overreach. Bang! Right in the D tier. Uh, next to Eye of Soul. Another PvP sniper. Okay. Occluded Finality. Occluded Finality. Where's that guy? Occluded Finality is right here. Um, hmm. Occluded. I just scrolled right past it. My bad. A clear finality is an arc aggressive from I think uh, Iron Banner. Yeah, not Gambit. Iron Banner. I was confusing it with uh, the other arc Gambit sniper. Uh, this thing's got auto firing and Vorpal, so pretty much auto firing. It's auto firing, um, which is pretty unique. I don't think uh, most aggressive snipers have auto loading, and it has firing line. So you know, if you wanted to use it for like a damage rotation for whatever reason on a arc, 
in case an arc heavy ever becomes meta. It's an option. It's an option that exists. No ammo return perk though. So not looking too hot. Uh, I decided to put this thing in the C tier. Uh, now the question is, where are we going to put it in the C tier? I think it belongs probably right next to here. Right here. Yeah, I think all of these snipers kind of share the same identity of being, uh, you know, okay damage perk snipers with a lack of support. Okay, next up. Next up, we have Omniscient Eye. Ooh, 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 this one's rough. This one's rough. This one, they gave us a rapid fire sniper that's solar, and then they, they, the, what is this? I mean, to be fair, they did this during Shadowgate, but still. Like, what is this? What is this? Okay, no words need to be said. We are, we are all going to gather together in a circle and pray that this thing's reprise is good, because it needs the fucking help. It needs the help. Okay, so this thing's a, this thing's solidly in the D tier. I'm gonna leave it right over here. Um, yikes, yikers. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, persuader. I, I actually don't know a lot about this sniper. This is like the sniper I know the least about on this list. I think it's pretty new. Uh, what is this from? Season of the Witch. Right. Okay. Cool. It just looks like a Vanguard sniper. Um, and it's void. It's a void rapid. So it's it's competing with Father's Sins. And uh, this thing has um, yeah, it's pretty bad. Okay. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. It has high ground which is pretty bad, and has triple tap in the same column for some reason. So, what, what were they thinking? Who let bro cook? That is all I'm going to say. Who let bro, who persuaded bro to put these perks on this sniper? This is, this is just not it. This is just not it. This is just not it. So, persuader, uh, we're going to put it, where's this thing? I don't even know what this thing looks like, so I don't even know what I'm looking for. I'm going to pick the sniper that looks different from the rest. Uh, this one. Okay, there we go. Persuader. Um, this thing, yeah, triple tap high ground, but in different columns. This thing's going in the C tier. Uh, I think we're gonna put it probably bottom of the C tier, like right here. I think this is good. Yeah, okay. Uh, next up we have... Praedith. Praedith. Oh, my beloved. I used to run Praedith all the time in speedrunning for killing individual red bars. Uh, like I mentioned to you. It's a very snappy feeling sniper, very wonderful, but unfortunately for it, I'm going to do it dirty today because the supremacy exists. So this thing's a kinetic rapid, which is great, but unfortunately it has no ammo return perk, so no four times a charm. Uh, it has rewind rounds, which is really nice. It's a really great reload perk, uh, but unfortunately no firing line. So frenzy and high impact reserves. Now rewind does have some synergy with high impact reserves, but still not looking too hot. And of course it's the type of sniper where you just got to dump it straight, which is not really what snipers are really built for doing. So, you know, again, it, it's pretty decent, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to drop this thing to the B tier. We're going to drop it to the B tier. I think I'm going to put it right ahead of Albruna. Um, I think, yeah, I think it deserves to be top of B tier. Tippity top of B tier. I think that is where this thing goes. Okay, next up, we have Shepherd's Watch. Um, this thing, I'm not even sure you can get this thing anymore. Um, I remember, like, people were looking for, like, an under pressure opening shot on this thing for, like, PvP or something. Because like under pressure was like really good or something back then. I don't remember. I just remember hearing stuff about this. This is an adaptive frame, so I don't think I need to say much more than that. Uh, it has firing line and lead from gold, but no ammo return perk. Um, dude, you know what? Analyzing snipers is like so much more boring than shotguns. But I don't know. You guys asked me to do this, but it's literally like snipers are so they lack diversity. I've been saying this before, but they lack diversity. They're literally just like looking at the same. Is it firing line? Vorpal. Firing line. Vorpal. Firing line. Vorpal. Just over and over again. And then like, oh, it has triple tap. Oh, it has four times. Oh, it has left from... Like, it's like the same perks over and over. It's like the same eight perks that we're looking at over and over. Just copy pasted on the same fucking sniper, you know? Anyways, <laughs> rant aside, uh, I'm going to put this thing in the C tier, okay? I'm going to put this thing in the C tier. I don't think anyone's going to be mad about that. Um, I think it goes right over here. Um, has firing line, again, has lead, no overflow, but it's kinetic. So I think it's tied with locust, probably like right about here, you know, I, I think it's fine. Okay, let's keep going. We have Silicon Neuroma next. Silicon Neuroma. Silicon Neuroma, I remember farming the glass way out for this one when that, when that first came out. This thing has triple tap firing line, which is the only really notable role on this thing, triple tap firing. Um, but it has a really small mag. It's not like succession. It doesn't, it's not cool. It doesn't have like an eight mag or a 10 mag. This thing's got a wee tiny little four mag, you know, a five with backup. So not great, not great. You're not going to make much use of triple tap with this thing without rain of fire or something like that. And I, I don't know why you're using rain of fire with an aggressive sniper for DPS. So it's a little silly. Um, that being said, you know, it's okay. You know, if this is a sniper that you have and there's nothing much that you have, you don't have succession or something like that. It's okay. It's just okay. So I'm going to put this thing, unsurprisingly, un 
no one's gonna be surprised by this. We're gonna put it in the B tier. Right, right in the B tier. I think probably even like lower than this. I think like here. Yeah. I actually, yeah. I think like here, actually. You know what? Yeah, right there. Right there. Okay, let's keep going. What do we got? Soul Survivor. Soul Survivor. I think that's the sniper right here. Yeah, Soul Survivor. I actually know very little about this sniper as well. So we're gonna we're gonna try to remember what I was thinking about when I was tiering it. So this thing is an adaptive arc. Okay, well, <laughs> that already tells you a lot. Adaptive arc sniper, and it has what? Field prep, lead from gold, and firing. So not bad. No ammo return perk, which is pretty important for snipers. I'm saying the same things over and over again, but um, it's okay. It's okay, and um, it's like adored, except no triple tap, and it has firing line instead, which is like okay. That's just fine. So we're gonna put that in the C tier. <clears throat> I'm gonna put it in the C tier next to Persuader, or actually, it definitely deserves to be above Persuader. Definitely, like, right around here. I think this is good. Yeah. Okay, next up, we have Succession. Okay, well, I don't think anyone's going to be surprised by where we put Succession, but let's, uh, let's go through the, you know, the proper motions anyway. Succession is a kinetic aggressive sniper, which is the, the second best configuration you can have in the game, which is great. This thing has reconstruction. Now, reconstruction is such a good perk on small mag weapons or on single shot weapons that I had to give it some extra cash, some extra bonus points for having reconstruction. So instead of putting the usual 0 0.5 for a reload perk, I put in a 1 um, just because, you know, reconstruction is that cracked. And then it has lead from gold in case you want to do that for, uh, for jams or something like that. And then it has recombination, which I consider a separate class of damage perk from like Vorpal. It has firing line and uh, it has focus free Vorpal. So mostly just recombination firing line. This thing is pretty solid. Uh, I think uh, everyone's quite familiar with how good the sniper is. Um, and I didn't have any choice but to put it in the S tier. Boom. Okay, in the S tier. Succession is a quintessential sniper. No doubt about that. I don't think anybody is here to argue with that. Let's move on. We have the Long Walk next. The Long Walk is a solar aggressive sniper from the Prophecy Dungeon. Um, let's take a look at what it has. So the Long Walk has Overflow. And it has, that's not overflow, oh, overflow, it is a clown cartridge, and it has firing line and frenzy. So mostly we're just looking at firing line here. And um, overflow and clown cartridge, I mean, you're probably going to be picking overflow because you don't want to be manually reloading the sniper for the most part. But, um, you know, it's just okay. It's just okay. Overflow firing is a decent roll. Um, no enhanced overflow, obviously, because it's not craftable. But it's solar, which is good. And it's aggressive, which is decent. Decent pick to have with the overflow and firing line. So, as a result... Because of that description, we're going to put in the B tier. We're going to put in the B tier. I think it goes right underneath Albruna. Albruna has nicer perks, you know, has a nicer spread of perks, more diversity, but it's Arc instead of Solar. So I think they go right next to each other. Good compromises, good matchup. Let's move on. What do we got next? We have the Supremacy. Supremacy. Okay. Supremacy, I think you guys know where this one's going as well. But this thing is the sniper. This, this is the SOAT. Okay. The SOAT. The sniper of all time. Okay. So far, at least. Okay, if this thing got if this thing got four times the charm in the first column rather than the second column, it would be Jover. Okay, it would be Jover. It would be Jover. The economy would be over. It would be over. All right. There would be no. There would be no. It, that would be Sniper Two. Okay. Every other sniper would be Sniper One, and this one would be Sniper Version Two. Sniper Two. Okay. Anyways, moving on. This thing is a kinetic rapid. It's a kinetic rapid. It's craftable, and it has the following: lead from gold. It has rewind rounds. It has four times a charm, it has Focus Fury, Kinetic Tremors, Vorpal, and it has Bait and Switch. So basically, it has a lot of good perks. It's the only sniper in the game, as far as I'm aware, with Kinetic Tremors. And Kinetic Tremors is actually pretty good. Kinetic Tremors evens out with Enhanced to a 66% damage perk, assuming you only shoot two shots and swap off to another weapon. Which makes this thing a sleeper pick for DPS, for, uh, you know... Just just uh, individual players in a fire team. And Kinetic Tremors is actually extremely, extremely, extremely useful in um, just regular content where you just want to tap a major and move on. So if you want to chip in a little bit, it's like Wither Horde. You just shoot a guy twice with a rapid fire sniper, which is like very little time. And uh, you tag him and bag him. And, you know, it, they just take big shockwaves and uh, it's, it's great. So this thing is a utility sniper as much as it is a damage sniper. Rewind round is fantastic. And um, if only four times the charm is in the first column. If only. If only. Because rewind four times a charm as much as it's a funny meme roll, it's not actually that useful. Um, if four times a charm is in the first column, imagine that. Four times a charm, bait and switch. Hello? Four times a charm, kinetic tremors? Like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Great gog googly moogly. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, that aside, this thing is easily top of S tier. Okay. I don't think I, I don't think, yeah, there, there's, there's no contention here. Does higher DPS than succession? Uh, does higher total damage than succession with bait and switch? 
uh, has rewind rounds, has kinetic tremors, it's utility, it's boss damage, it's roam, it does fucking everything, okay? This sniper is too good, okay? That being said, it's still a sniper, so it's, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not amazing, but it's still the best sniper, okay? Let's move on. We got Thoughtless. Thoughtless, I don't think, and you know what? If you really want to see the perks, you can, but we already saw this thing's perks, right? We, we, we looked at Locus Locutus or whatever, right? Hocus Pocus, we looked at the Hocus Pocus sniper. This thing is literally the same thing. Okay, it has Focus Fury instead, but who cares? Okay, so it's, it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. So guess where I'm going to put it? I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to put it slightly above because Focus Fury might have some use in like solo content or something. I don't know why you're using Thoughtless in solo content, but regardless, there it is. Okay, let's keep going. Tranquility. 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 This thing is a moon sniper. Moon sniper, you can tell by how moony it looks. Uh, it's a kinetic adaptive. Uh, I mean, it's an adaptive, so I don't think I need to tell you much more, but it has auto lead firing frenzy. Uh, this is a perk pool we've seen probably a hundred times before, so you probably don't need to know where I'm going to put it. It's just going to go in the seats here. Um, it's an adaptive, you know, it's an adaptive. Uh, I think I'm going to put it right underneath the Yasmin. Yasmin probably is more viable because of its utility purposes uh, and stuff like runneth over. Uh, this thing is a bit worse, right? It has auto firing, which is cool, but again, it's an adaptive. So we're going to put it right next to Yasmin. All right. We have, how many snipers do we have left? Actually, we have four. We have four left, only four left. Let's actually line them up in order just so we don't have to move them anymore. All right. That's, I believe that's the right order. Okay. Let's go to Volta Bracket next. Volta Bracket. Now this one was kind of a sleeper pick. Okay. This one was one that I didn't expect to like. Because again, it's a strand aggressive. It comes from Neomuna. And I was like, okay, this is probably like, you know, it's just a Neomuna weapon. It's kind of whatever. But this thing has enhanced cascade point. It has firing line. It has triple tap. And it has envious. And it has shoot to loot. Now, shoot to loot's not great on an aggressive sniper because you have to use more, per a higher percentage of your ammo just to shoot a brick. But that aside, it has triple tap envious. I can see maybe Envious Cascade being used for some sort of range damage rotation. It's not that far-fetched. I mean, the only problem this thing has is, you know, it's no four times a charm. Uh, and it has, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's Strand. It's not Kinetic, right? It's Strand. So um, it's moving in the right direction. It's not making it all the way there. But I think it does enough for us to put it in the A tier. It does enough for us to put it in the A tier. Uh, I'm going to put it, I think, right over here. Uh, right here. Right here. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good spot for our, our wonderful friend, Volta Bracket. I just realized Volta Bracket is actually not the sniper that we were supposed to talk about there. That is not alphabetical order, but it's okay. It's okay. Uh, let's go to Uzume next. Uzume RR4. Uzumis. Uzumis. Okay, this sniper got shafted. I'm just going to say it now. This sniper got shafted. I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know if you guys were around for this, but I remember farming Warden of Nothing for Adept Uzume R4 with Triple Tap and Vorpal, thinking it was going to be the shit. And then two weeks later, two weeks later, not two weeks later, Bungie re releases a Void Adaptive Frame Sniper through the Banshee Vendor. And this Void Adaptive Frame Sniper has four times the charm and firing line. Yeah, that's what they did. That's what they did. That's what they did. That's what they did. So this thing is pretty bad. This thing is literally just, it's just adored, but like, it's cooler scope looking thing yeah that, that's what it is okay this thing they it, you know it's 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 sad you know it's a nightfall weapon and it's kind of bad you know it's kind of bad uh it's purple is pretty bad and um it's solar but it's an adaptive right so they it's just not great not great we're gonna put this thing in the seats here uh i don't think anyone's gonna have any complaints about that we're gonna put it probably right over here yeah right over here i think that's good that's a that's a happy place for our wonderful Uzume to go. Two snipers left. Two snipers are going to be down soon. What do we have next? We have Twilight Oath. Okay, Twilight Oath is actually a sniper that I thought was pretty bad. And then I realized it's a rapid solar sniper, right? It's a rapid solar sniper and it has Vorpal, which is okay, right? If you're a new player, it has lead too. It has lead Vorpal. If you're a new player and uh, this is all you've got, this is actually pretty decent damage. You know, it's not horrible. It's not horrible, right? Mostly because it's a rapid fire. So, um, you know, as a result, I'm actually going to put this thing in the B tier. I'm actually going to put this thing in the B tier. Uh, probably going to surprise some of you because it doesn't have an ammo return perk. But um, it's got, it's it's a rapid, it's a uh, solar, it has lead, and it has vorpal. So it has a decent damage perk, best archetype, best affinity, um, but everything else is kind of, you know, it's just okay, right? So this thing is definitely bottom, bottom of B tier. You could easily see it, you know, trading plays with Yasmin. They're both kind of on the same footing here, but I'm going to put it 
in the bottom of B tier. And finally, finally, we have Widow's Bite. Okay, Widow's Bite, I'm just going to click on it as our last sniper. Widow's Bite has lead from gold. That's all it has. Yeah. Widow's Bite has lead from gold. That's all it has. It's a rapid fire solar sniper though. Um, so I can give it that, but that's pretty much all I can give it. Uh, I'm going to put it in the C tier. Uh, it's no damage perk looking ass. It's just going to go in the C tier, bottom of C tier. Okay. I don't think there's any objections to that. Um, so yeah, this is the, um, this is the end game PVE sniper tier list for season of the witch. Uh, I don't think any of the sniper picks here in particular are going to be surprising to most players who are end game players. Uh, maybe Irukandji being this high might be a surprise to some of you. Maybe supremacy being above succession will be a surprise to some of you. Uh, in my scoring system, supremacy was way higher than everything else because it just does so much so well. Um, some other stuff here, I mean, I, me personally, when I was first ranking this list, I didn't expect these two snipers, these three snipers, these four snipers to be up here, actually. Um, so yeah, and uh, I had to set aside some of my biases, you know, I really like Praetis Revenge, so I had to set aside some of my biases, rank things objectively, put this thing in the beats here. Um, but besides that, that is pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek of the spreadsheet that was used to rank these things. I'm going to show you the scoring system, right? So Supremacy tops the chart with a score of 14. If we go all the way to the bottom, 1,000 yards there, bottom of the chart with zero, a fat big donut, okay? So that is pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about this tier list uh, or about snipers in general, feel free to let me know. I think next up, we're probably going to do fusion rifles. Uh, that's probably going to be coming out in a day or two. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'm excited to talk about fusion rifles. Probably going to be more interesting than, than snipers, uh, although less interesting than shotguns. I think we peaked with shotguns. So, uh, you know, not, not that great. But um, yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, I'll see you when we talk about fusion rifles. Goodbye.